Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Now, the President of the General Assembly, Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa, will do some opening remarks, and afterwards, she will take your questions. Thank you very much. Madam President. Well, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Hello, dear friends uh, from the media. Uh, you have a very, very important role to play here in this house. Uh, as you know, I have uh, just taken my oath of office as the president of the General Assembly for the 73rd session, and I would like to thank, of course, my predecessor, President Miroslav Lajak, and his team for their support during uh, this very uh, intense uh, transition process. As I stand here today, I would also like to thank my home country, Ecuador, and President Lenin Moreno uh, for the great support he offered to my candidacy first and now uh, to my uh, taking office today. I am proud and happy to become the first woman in Latin America and the Caribbean to preside over the General Assembly. I, uh, in my work here, uh, we intend to strengthen multilateralism. There is only, uh, the only, I would say, a way uh, to solve the global problems is through a collective, cooperative approach. That's what we need. Uh, dear friends, uh, I am committed uh, to working with all member states in this house to make it a productive, smooth, and efficient year to achieve concrete results for the people we serve around the world. I promised uh, during my campaign that I would have a presidency of open doors, and I mean it. I will be listening not only to member states, to civil society organizations and other partners, but also to the people out there, to the general public, to the common citizen around the world. We are investing great efforts in communications uh, to keep an open channel with women and girls, with persons with disabilities, with uh, people who are right now suffering violence and the consequences of conflict and war. I will be attentively listening to them, to the victims. The theme of my presidency is, and I quote, making the United Nations relevant to all people, global leadership and shared responsibilities for peaceful, equitable, and sustainable societies. This was chosen after intensive conversations with member states, but also with civil society, with public opinion makers around the world. When we then decided about seven priorities to execute our work program. One, I said that, one for each day of the week. Most of these priorities are cross-cutting on gender equality. I firmly believe it's about time to make this world equal for women and men. It is about time to make gender parity a reality. We will also dedicate our focus to the second priority, migration and refugees. The General Assembly will have an international conference in Marrakesh, in Morocco, next December, where we will adopt the Global Compact on Migration. We will also discuss, as a, uh, as a third priority, decent work. Climate action is another of my priorities and now I have an international framework that we all know, and it is the Paris Agreement. But we need to implement it by transforming our economies into green economies everywhere. Here, we will have a global campaign against plastics. This is, of course, among the environmental action priorities. Another priority will be the persons with disabilities, how we can increase accessibility to produce more inclusive societies and the role of youth and peace and security in how to involve our youth in decision-making processes, staying away from radicalism. And finally, we will work on the seventh priority, the priority for Sunday. But it, it will be, of course, a cross-cutting effort. I have called it the revitalization of the United Nations. 
based on the reform proposed by the Secretary General Antonio Guterres, which is the, for, the reform on peace and security, the development system, and the management reform. This revitalization stream will have other very important components. The revitalization of the working methods of the General Assembly, but also Security Council reform. As you can see, it will be a very dynamic, busy, and productive year, and we will count on you to help us communicate in order to bring the UN closer to the people and the people closer to the UN. And a final issue, because I know some of us like acronyms. Uh, I intend to make less use of them, but of course, I did not resist to create an acronym myself for this presidency, which is the DARE acronym. DARE doing things better. DARE improving the way we work together within this house. And DARE stands for delivery, accountability, relevance, and efficiency. We will dare to, char to change. We will dare to go the extra mile to build a better world uh, here at the General Assembly, which is the Parliament of Humanity. Thank you for your attention, and I stand ready to respond to any questions you may have. Madam President, it's Pamela Falk from CBS News. You said the compact on migration was something you hoped to get passed an agreement on on this General Assembly. How do you hope to do that? And what will you do tougher and harder as a woman in this position? Thank you. Well, we are preparing for uh, the summit in Marrakesh uh, in Morocco. Uh, world leaders uh, will meet uh, in Morocco to adopt formally the Global Compact on Migration. But then we have a harder work, which is the implementation phase the modalities under which we will assess implementation of the commitments and their, under the Global Compact on Migration. We will also be working under the umbrella of the Global Compact on Refugees. In other words, we will be working on ensuring rights to the people in human mobility. That is going to be one of the uh, priorities and focus of my presidency next year. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, I'm Margaret Bashir with the Voice of America. Congratulations. Uh, my question to you is the Security Council is very paralyzed on Syria. They have been for several years now. Uh, they also lack consensus in other areas like Palestine uh, today, after today, perhaps on North Korea. What do you uh, see as a role for the General Assembly in these uh, critical situations where there is paralysis in the Security Council? Well, first of all, I think it's very important to keep proper coordination with the main organs of the United Nations. I plan to have monthly coordinating meetings with ECOSOC, with the Security Council, and of course with the Office of the Secretary General, which is the executive arm of the system. Uh, regarding the role of the Security Council and the role of the General Assembly, we have, uh, uh, there is an existing resolution called uh, Uniting for Peace, uh, which allows the General Assembly to take over issues that for one reason or, or another um, um, are not being, you know, addressed and solved uh, by the Security Council. And I'll stand ready to take these issues on according to decisions taken also by member states. The, the agenda of the General Assembly is in a, in a it's shaped uh, by member states. But I will be attentive and open uh, to, uh, to uh, really include the issues that uh, deserve greater attention from the Parliament of Humanity, which is the General Assembly. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, felicitaciones. Le voy a hacer esta pregunta en español. Eh, Celia Mendoza de la Voz de América para América Latina. Um, usted menciona este tema de los refugiados y las migraciones. Definitivamente para las Américas se está viviendo un momento clave, en especial con las migraciones eh, de venezolanos hacia la región. Ecuador en particular, su país ha sido eh, clave en estas reuniones de Cancillería para tratar de buscar una solución. ¿Cómo ve a la Asamblea General tratar este tipo de temas eh, desde eh, esta nueva posición que tiene en especial en vistas de esta reunión de fin de año? ¿Y, y cómo esto podría afectar o, o manejar el tema en esta Asamblea General, donde obviamente vamos a tener representantes de todas las naciones, en especial aquellas afectadas? Bueno, los, los temas de flujos migratorios eh, realmente requieren respuestas compartidas. Eh, soy una 
una eh, gran apoyadora de las respuestas regionales a estos problemas. Eh, siempre en flujos migratorios están los países de origen, los de destino, los países de tránsito. Por lo general, los temas migratorios son temas que deben preocupar y comprometer a las regiones. En este caso también, la respuesta regional, en el caso que usted menciona, ha sido eh, importante eh, y esperamos que todos los flujos eh, migratorios que se producen en todo el mundo tengan una respuesta regional y ahora bajo este amplio paraguas del Pacto Global de las Migraciones. Uh, Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press, uh, congratulations on Thank your you. presidency. Um, as, as you know, uh, the resolutions for peace are non-binding uh, as opposed to Security Council resolutions. I assume you would agree with that. That's been the, that's been the long uh, held view. Um, and each year, uh, the incoming president of the General Assembly sets out some very bold and optimistic um, objectives, um, seemingly the same uh, year after year. So I'm wondering how you intend um, to try to carry out your mission differently than your predecessors and maybe convince those skeptics, including in the United States, in the leadership of the United States, as to the value of multilateral organizations. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your question. I think that the issue of being binding, not binding, when you talk about peace and the building of uh, peaceful, equitable, sustainable societies, I think it's in the interest of everybody. So what we need is global commitments, shared responsibilities to address those very issues. So I think that the role of the General Assembly is the Parliament of Humanity. It's the norm-setting body of, of the planet. I think we have a very important role to play as a norm-setting uh, um, body, but also as a policymaker uh, body. The work of the General Assembly is going to be, uh, you know, focusing on the preventive approach uh, to, to conflict, on the sustaining peace uh, approach to conflict. So uh, I will put a lot of effort in, in working on, on, this, on this approach, but also looking specifically at the role of the youth. Uh, more. Uh, job opportunities and decent work for, for the youth, more opportunities for the youth for poli greater political participation, more dialogue, more conversations, regardless if we talk about uh, whether it's binding or not binding. I think that to live in a more secure and peaceful world is in the interest of everybody, and that's why multilateralism is so important. Okay. You said uh, multilateralism is top on your agenda. How do we make it deliver? Gender? Uh, multilateralism. Oh, multilateralism. I couldn't hear. The, the microphone was on the side. But your question was on how to strengthen multilateralism. Yeah. I, I think that the multilateral system has already delivered on so many key important issues. The very 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals, it's the new umbrella for humanity to de deliver on development, especially for the countries in need, especially for the least developed countries, for the small island developing states, for the landlocked countries. Uh, we have delivered, uh, the, for example, the, the fight against uh, HIV AIDS. Uh, we are having a high level event on tuberculosis and non-communicable diseases. There is a lot that the system has delivered on. I think that it, not only that we need to communicate better, but to apply the DARE acronym that I just mentioned, to deliver more and better, to work together, to use dialogue as, a, as the most important weapon. Uh, the accountability issue and the transparency issue is also extremely important. Uh, the R, uh, the R uh, on the DARE acronym is about relevance. The theme for this session is about making the United Nations more relevant to all people. It's not only, and it is in a, in a big way, to communicate better, but to deliver better, to make changes in the livelihoods, in the daily life of people 
uh, that are uh, who are suffering from hunger, from uh, epidemics, uh, from uh, discrimination of all kinds. And the E on the their acronym is about efficiency. Do we need to improve the working methods of the General Assembly? That's why I will put a lot of political impetus on the revitalization process. Presidenta, buenas tardes. Mario Villar de la Agencia EFE. De cara a las reuniones de la próxima semana con los líderes de todo el mundo, ¿cuál va a ser su mensaje a los jefes de Estado y de Gobierno y qué asuntos concretos eh, tiene previsto tratar con ellos en las reuniones que mantenga bilateralmente? Bueno, la siguiente semana eh, yo creo que es una muestra que el multilateralismo está vivo y es visto como un espacio vital para lograr el desarrollo la paz y la seguridad y el respeto a los derechos humanos a nivel mundial. Tenemos un número récord de jefes de Estado y de gobierno llegando a Nueva York la próxima semana. De lo que entiendo son más de 120 que están registrados para hablar. Mi agenda, estoy haciendo todo lo posible por eh, eh, estirar el tiempo y poder reunirme con la mayor cantidad de líderes posible. Y creo que el mensaje es simple. Tenemos una obligación de fortalecer el sistema multilateral. Tenemos un mandato de nuestros pueblos de que, de que representarlos en esta casa tiene que estar a la altura de sus necesidades. El gran mensaje será que esta sigue siendo la casa más importante del sistema multilateral. El fortalecimiento tiene que ver con la eficiencia de la operación del sistema el proceso de reforma, pero también con contar con los recursos necesarios que el sistema requiere para poder cumplir con las obligaciones que tiene. Ese será el gran mensaje sobre la necesidad de liderazgos globales para apuntalar el sistema multilateral y la necesidad de cumplirla a la gente a la que representamos. Madame President, Stefano Vaccara, La Voce de New York, Radio Radical en Roma. And another woman from uh, South America, Michelle Bachelet, um, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, she uh, recently did a speech and she was attacked by many governments, many governments, important governments, for what she said about human rights and the respect of human rights. How the President of the General Assembly can help on human rights and make this that you call the Parliament of the world more sensitive about human rights. Yo creo que la, la carta de las Naciones Unidas es muy clara en este aspecto. Uh, sorry, you ask in English. Your question was, sorry, I, I will, uh, it's because of your Italian accent, I'm sorry, that I felt, you know, just a drive to, to respond in, in Spanish. But basically, I, I think that uh, the, the charter is very clear. Member states, have to work collectively. Collective action is much needed to comply on the three pillars of the Charter. One is on development, and we have the Sustainable Development Goals. One is on peace and security, and we have to work hand in hand with the Security Council. And third is the human rights architecture. Human rights is, is about the dignity of human beings. I think it's the, the, the beating heart of the system. Either we, we bring dignity to the people in need, to the disenfranchised, uh, to the poorest of the poor, to women and girls that are victims of violent conflict, it's either we deliver on this or the system would become irrelevant. So we have a strong commitment. And I'm very proud to say that this year is going to be a very special year for women in Latin America. We have the president of ECOSOC, the, 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 the Social and Economic Council of the system that is presided over a, a wonderful woman, a wonderful woman, uh, the PR from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have the High Commissioner on Human Rights, former President Michelle Bachelet, and myself as your president, as the president of the General Assembly. Rhonda King, Michelle Bachelet, and myself will be working hand in hand together to comply with the very principles of the Charter. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.